Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Serena Killam and today I'm going to show you how I use Descript Storyboard as a quick and easy way to create really interesting lectures for my students um, that are uh, using the universal design principles so they're accessible for anyone with um, uh, vision impairments or hearing impairments and they're also um, accessible for other students who might need both audio, visual and written um context for their lectures. So I've started a new project here and at the moment it's untitled and I've got just a little bit of text. Uh, it's actually an abstract from a paper that I'm writing and so I'm just going to come in here and just copy paste it straight in. Now I'm going to make a few changes to this text because um, it's not a paper, it's a lecture. Um, and you can see at the moment it's just something that's written and there's no audio associated with it. So if you look here where it says speaker, I can click on that. And this is one of the tools that I think is really uh, powerful and quite a lot fun to play with in Descript, which is you can use an overdub voice. Now I have trained Descript on my voice and so it's like artificial intelligence, AI. Um, it uses my voice and um, it it isn't quite right. The accent's a little bit off, but it's more or less there. So I've just chosen my own voice. I'm going to give this a new title while that's processing. And we can see down the bottom now, if you look down here, I'm just going to readjust the size, that there is now audio associated with the uh, written text that is up here. So let's see if we can listen to this audio already. This lecture introduces the Autonomous Livelihood Framework. Oh, so um, I don't actually have the audio enabled in this recording, uh, but I will show you at the end what the audio sounds like. So there is audio there. And what I want to do now is I want to break this up a little bit and I want to add some visuals for my students. So I'm going to come over here to the three dots and I'm going to click on switch to video. And now I have a new pane that's opened up here on the right hand side. I'm just going to use the forward slash to create what's called some scene markers here. Now the scene markers don't actually have to have their own new line. However, I like to do that. Um, because I like chunking my work and I find that chunking my work is better for me and better for the workflow that I have. So now I have um, these three chunks and with each chunk I can associate some media. Now normally I would use my own media like videos or photos that I have from field work but the great thing with Descript is that if you don't have any media they are now integrated with stock images, stock illustrations and Unsplash. So Unsplash is my personal preference. I use students to use it because I think it's quite good. Let's type in farmers here and we could choose any of these images. These are unlicensed images or free to use images and we're just going to click one and then it will start to be associated with these different chunks of text. So we can see here now that this image is associated with this first chunk over here on the left. There's a little thumbnail view of it and that bit of text there is underlined. And then I can click a new thumbnail and I go again back to media. I'll choose a different image. It's uploading. My internet's quite slow. And then let's go and choose my final image we go. Okay, so now I have my text, I have my uh, overdub voice audio, and I have images for all of this. Now, let's say that that was as much of my lecture as I wanted to deliver. Maybe this is just like a little intro zinger. And so now what I normally have to do is try and get this into my LMS, my learning management system. So uh, the great thing about Descript is that you can either put it straight on the web, you can download it to your local device and re-upload to an LMS, or you can also embed it as an iframe in LMS. So the way that we do this is we come over here to publish. And you can see here there's two tabs. There's the publish tab and there's the export tab. 
So if I was to do the publish tab, there's many different ways I could publish it as a web link, as a YouTube, and there's some settings that you might want to come in and check. Now, I allow comments. I think comments is a really great way to get students engaging with the video and with the lectures and making comments about them. And I also always leave show transcript and that's for universal design reasons and accessibility reasons. And so then I would click publish and that goes out and creates a web link. If I wanted to export it, however, I would come over here and again, there's many different ways that you can export your work. And this is really great because sometimes you might want to take the audio that you have from multiple lectures and put them together as a podcast, for example, or you might want to uh, download and then re-upload the videos into um, like if your institution requires you to um, keep an archive of the material that you produce, you could do that. But it also lets you download a transcript. Now, this is very short and I actually use the transcript function a lot more for research, but let's go and have a look at what happens in the transcript function. So um, if I downloaded the transcript, I could choose how it is downloaded. So Word, HTML, plain text, RTF, um, and um, then I would just click export. And so then I have, uh, I could have the audio from this lecture. I could have the video that I can embed on an LMS and I would have a written transcript, which I could possibly use to then turn into modules or something else. So it really allows you to get lots of richness out of the one set of content that you have. So let's go and have a look at what this looks like when it is published as a web link. I'm just going to come down. This is one that I actually published earlier. So here is my lecture draft that I published earlier. Now, unfortunately, I don't think I've enabled um, sharing of the audio. This lecture introduces but you can the see autonomous if I livelihood press play framework down here on the bottom framework for the uh, left hand side. That the as the audio is going and the pictures are changing on the right hand side, it is moving through the transcript and highlighting in the transcript I will be where it is up to. I'm just going to pause that. Now, um, if you wanted to embed this in your LMS, you can come here and there is the uh, iframe code that you can copy to embed directly in the LMS. Or you can get the link and copy and paste it. For example, if you wanted to copy and paste it in the modules that you are teaching so that students access it on a weekly basis or um, depending on, on how you structure your modules. Uh, students can also download it. You can show the comments if you wanted to see um, student comments and you can track the number of views. So uh, particularly if you've got smaller cohorts, um, it's you're able to see the number of students who have actually clicked through and watched the whole thing. And students will also be able to download it if they want to download it. So I hope that that has shown you some of the power of Descript and how it is really great for academics and researchers and teachers. Um, it allows us to produce some really high quality content in a very efficient way. Um, it's very user friendly um, and there's also great resources online to guide you through it. I'm gonna hopefully make a series of videos on this um, and explain how I use it in other contexts in my academic and researcher life. So please um, come back and check out my YouTube channel for more details on that. Bye.